playoff momentum in chili champagne. It's just below 40. must prove tonight they can win when old man winter rears his ugly head. This is ridiculous. The road to the Super Bowl promises to be a cold one. The defense scores seven points. I'm going to stop this defense. Let's go. We take the next step today. The Bears home away from home is Memorial Stadium in Champaign, Illinois. And tonight, Chicago finishes its season against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick. It's great to have you with us. They say that wounded bears are dangerous, but these bears have been wounded so many times they're one shot away from being stuffed. They've used 46 different starters tonight, by far the most they have ever used in the 83-year history of the Chicago Bears. The Bucks have a lot to play for tonight. A win, and they get a first-round bye in the playoffs. But it is 35 degrees in Champaign, and Tampa Bay has never won a game when it was under 40 degrees. They are 0-21, and you get the feeling if they don't do it tonight, they may never do it. And if they do, they'll have to do it without Brad Johnson. He's still hurt. So, Joe, it's up to Rob Johnson. And Rob Johnson has a tremendous opportunity to prove to Coach Gruden that he can be consistent at the quarterback spot. When I talked to John Gruden yesterday, he said the one thing that concerns me is inconsistency. That's an opportunity tonight for Rob Johnson. Also, Brad Johnson may not be healthy for next week. And if the Bucks have to play, this is a chance for Rob Johnson to prove he can be the guy. Of course, for the Chicago Bears, Henry Burris gets his first opportunity to start in the National Football League. Henry Burris is a guy who's come down from Canada, a third-string quarterback. He's a little bit different than Jim Miller and Chris Chandler. He provides some mobility to the offense, and he's going to have to run with the football tonight. But, Paul, you got to stop and think. How far and how much is he going to have to run from this great defense? Well, isn't it ironic? Henry Burris' first start is against the number one defense in the National Football League. Well, the Tampa Bay allows the fewest yards and points per game. They also lead the league in interceptions with 27. And when you talk about Tampa Bay's defense, you think about Warren Sapp and Simeon Rice and John Lynch. But the unsung hero, the quiet leader of this football team is linebacker Derek Thomas. He has four returns for touchdowns. And Derek Thomas told us yesterday, we need this win. It gives us momentum going into the playoffs, something we haven't had in the last three years. Thank you, Paul. When we come back, it's a mini reunion for the Bucks who start right here at the University of Illinois. of them, Simeon Rice, who was the Big Ten sack leader and is now the sack leader in the NFC and is with our Susie Culver. Mike, Simeon proclaimed Memorial Stadium the house that Rice built. First time you've been back on the turf since you were drafted in 96. How big is the homecoming? Oh, it's big. I came back for one thing, to stick a flag back in this turf and represent tradition, pride, excellence, and the whole historical find that we call Illinois. So that's what I came back here to do, definitely stick a flag back in there and get a win. Throughout your career, you've had some critics. What do they understand now that they just didn't get before? I hope they still watch it. I hope they don't understand anything. Just continue to watch and the story going to unfold. The last two seasons in a row, Bucks lost the final game, then lost in the playoffs. How hyped are you guys for this one? We, we live with it. So right now, it's just about going out and proving what we know how to do and do it well to a whole nother level. Have a great no night. Doubt. Mike, and I believe he's actually a little more fired up than he normally is. <laughs> All right, thank you, Susie. MasterCard presents ESPN Skycam, innovative technology on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Skycam provides some of the most unique and memorable images ever seen from angles no other single camera in the world can achieve. We have been proud to bring it to you every Sunday night. The Bears are hoping that Brian Urlacher and the defense can carry the load again. Presentation of the National Football League.
John Gruden is the first coach in history to win back-to-back -back division titles with two different teams. A win tonight, he'll have a franchise record, 12 victories, and more importantly, perhaps, the Bucs will get a first-round bye in the playoffs. Aaron Stecker is the deep man, tied for eighth in the NFL with 25.1 yards of return. Paul Edinger will kick off for the Chicago Bears. And you want to talk about a team playing for pride, that's all the Bears have on the line tonight. But they have a lot of that. They do. And that guy has, has as much as anybody. We are underway in Champaign. Aaron Stecker has a seam to the 32. You know, we had a chance on Friday to, to talk to Brian Erlacher about Mike Allstott. And what do you do with him? He says, first of all, his legs are too big, so you can't get around him. The second thing that he runs so low that you can't get down low enough because I'm too tall. He says, the only way that you can tackle this guy and the only way I'm going to tackle him is around the shoulders. And I hope I can bring him down. The Bucks start from the 33-yard line. Pittman, the deep man in the eye. And Pittman will get the first carry, a gaping hole off the left side. And Pittman to the 49 for a gain of 16 yards. Michael Pittman has been in and out of the offensive running backfield, sharing time with Aaron Stecker and Mike Allstott. Rob Johnson takes over for Brad Johnson, and they're really concerned. Brad Johnson hasn't healed more than they thought. Obviously, with Keyshawn Johnson out there as a wide receiver and Keenan McCardell, they're real comfortable with their wide receiving court. Pittman, same place, then cuts it back. And is stacked up. He ran right into Philip Daniels. You know, we were talking to the coaches the other day, and they are talking about what would Tampa do against this defense. Nick Duran says, I would run against us. <laughs> so, I, you know, our defense, we, we've got a lot of holes. We've got a lot of guys that are hurt, and they're playing some different people. They've been doing that all year. He said, but if I'm going to do something, I'm going to run against our defense and only throw when you have to. You get those two safeties, Green and Brown. They love to hit people. So it'll be their kind of a game. The Bears run defense number 26 in the NFL. They have gotten no help from their offense this year. And Rob Johnson has to burn a timeout. Very early timeout as Rob Johnson didn't like the positioning of his offensive teammates. The numbers on the year for the sparingly used Rob Johnson. Bears show blitz and they come and Rob Johnson goes down. Looked like his center or guard stepped on his foot. And that is an easy sack for the Chicago Bears. I want to go back to the play before that created the situation for him. Look at the confusion. Rob Johnson, you see on the lower right of your screen, he's signaling to Ken Dilger to move over. Keyshawn Johnson saying, no, 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 go the other way. This is on the quarterback's shoulders. This is what happens when you don't play a lot. And that also shows you just how well Keyshawn Johnson knows every position on offense. That was the 15th sack against Rob Johnson. Check if they will not officially credit a sack. They'll call it a running play. And Johnson is back to throw. Throws short, complete down to the 45-yard line. That's going to be shy of a first down. Caught by Joe Jerovicious. You know, it really is a shame. When you, you start out and you run a couple of plays, you pick up a first down, you look like you're moving, and then you... Start, start to, to throw, throw, right? Yeah, you start to throw, which they don't really want to do. But they they have to in order to win this football game, I believe. Well, I, I don't think they need to do that so much, Paulie, except that they've got to get into a rhythm so they can see how comfortable Rob Johnson will be through a whole game if they need him. Merritt is deep. He waits at the 10 for Tom Tupa's punt. Merritt Fair Kiss. We're at the University of Illinois, a school founded in 1867. 
28,000 students enrolled here. We're going to see a lot of Simeon Rice. He went to Illinois. They have his picture here. You know what it is? Behind the Coke machine down there. <laughs> have to start from their nine. Leon Johnson pounds straight ahead up near the 15-yard line. Key individuals in this game tonight. First of all, for the Bears, it's Henry Burris. He gets his first career start. He brings mobility to this offense. But the other thing is the offensive line is going to have to block Simeon Rice and Warren Sapp. Warren Sapp, obviously, the shortest distance of the quarterback because he plays the tackle spot. And I don't believe that they're going to let Simeon Rice just go one-on-one -on -one with Mike Gandy. I would look for the Bears to help out that left tackle as much as possible with number 97 sitting outside. Two fullbacks in the game right now in front of Leon Johnson. And Johnson hit at the line of scrimmage and leans forward, taken down by Warren Sapp. I had a chance to talk to John Shoup, the offensive coordinator of the Bears, and he said he really wanted to run the football. He's got some good backs in Leon Johnson, and Adrian Peterson, Peterson will get in there as well. Offensively, Mike Gandy is his third tackle. Kevin Dogans is the second guard, so they're running real thin on the left side of the line, but they do have Olin Kruitz in the middle to anchor it, and without Chris Chandler as the quarterback, it might be tough to throw the football. Third and four. Johnson. John Lynch came up to hit him first. Got a lot of help. They gained only a yard. The crowd already booing the Chicago Bears for their choice of plays on third and four. Well, it's not so much the choice of plays. It's you have two fullbacks in the backfield. And you got a running back. And you're gonna you're telling them, Tampa, I'm gonna run the football. Yeah. And you still can't? Well, I, I, I believe Get that, out of it. Well, that's what I'm talking about. When you've got the third string tackle and the third string guard, it's tough to run anywhere on that offensive line, especially on the left side. Maynard to kick to Carl Williams. Low line drive kick. And it bounces out of bounds near the 37-yard line. A 48-yard kick with the roll. ESPN. And the Bucks, who get a first-round bye in the playoffs if they win tonight, start from their own 37-yard line. Rob Johnson at the controls for Tampa Bay's offense. Pittman. Runs into a wall, Erlacher right there. Let's go to Susie. Mike, we know Rob Johnson is tough. We also know he gets hit a lot. We're always wondering, why does he refuse to slide? He shed a little light on that. He said when he was a kid, his brother always made him play goal line offense and used to make him jump over the pile to get in the end zone. But of greater concern is not getting rid of the ball. He has the worst sack rate for any quarterback in NFL history. Once every 6.8 times he drops back. Last Monday night, sacked by the Steelers four times in one drive. One drive, isn't that amazing? And he's been sacked once in this game. It was officially credited after him again and this time Johnson gets out of there but he is buried once more Alfonso Boone and Bobby Howard get him that's the second sack of the game but that can't be credited to Rob Johnson that's just great pressure by the front of the Chicago Bears you get a chance to see it from Skycam here comes Erlacher right up the middle Pittman tries to block him but he still flushes him out and gives him an opportunity for Alfonso Boone to make the play Pittman trying to block him, but one guy just can't block Brian Erlacher. The offensive line has been a major area of concern for John Gruden and the Bucks this year. Johnson under pressure yet again. Scrambling and gets out of bounds with Erlacher in hot pursuit. <laughs> There's John Gruden. He's got to be a little bit concerned with what he's seeing. His offensive line has been his Achilles heel all year, and he's had to coach around it. In the last two plays, Rob Johnson just has to settle down. That's Brad Johnson standing there talking to him, saying, look, don't worry about it. It could be that kind of a game. What a bonus it would be for Tampa Bay if they could win, get the bye, and Brad Johnson would have an extra week to heal. And they need him to be their quarterback if they want to go anywhere in the playoffs. Absolutely. Ahmed Merritt back at the 20. Has the seam and is creamed as he got to the 31. Nate Webster, the backup middle linebacker, just bombed him. 
play from the University of Illinois Memorial Stadium Chicago with good field position this time they'll start at the 31 Henry Burris has not started a game since he played in Saskatchewan in 2000 to throw his first pass of the night and behind Leon Johnson a little check down over the middle and he missed him Sean Quarles was right there biggest challenge for Henry Burris is to keep himself calm. We had a chance to sit down with Marty Booker on Friday and he talked about the fact that Henry has a tendency to get a little bit excited, a little bit too excited. And this is important that he just relaxes a little bit and has a chance to settle into the game. Right now he is 11 for 33 this year. That is 33 percent. Fake the end around, give it to Leon Johnson, and he is swallowed at the line of scrimmage by Chartrick Darby. You know, you're talking about going up against the number one defense in the entire National Football League, and these guys, I'll tell you, they know that, first of all, the Chicago really can't throw the ball very well. So what they're doing defensively is they're just getting ready to tee off. They're going to play between the tackles. They know that they can't get wide with Leon Johnson and Damian Shelton. They're just not going to be able to run wide. So they have to run from tackle to tackle. And look at how they're bunched up in the middle. Third down and long for Chicago. Burris straight back into the pocket. Now he sprints up. And Brooks is right there, stops him for a gain of a yard. You know, you just watch Derek Brooks, and when you see what he does, is watch him get ready to make the play. He doesn't commit himself. 55 is Brooks. Watch this. Here comes Burris out. He just gets himself squared up with the field. There's just no place to run. I promise you, Henry Burris has not faced linebackers like Derek Brooks in the CFL. Paul, I was just going to say, uh, Henry Burris can run, but he's probably can't outrun Derek Brooks. Oh, what a kick. Carl Williams lets it go, hits it to 10, and just goes into the end zone. A 67-yard bomb from Brad Maynard, and he nearly killed it inside the five. Wait a minute. And now the Bucks have picked it up late. Dexter Jackson and flags are down. Unless the ball is touched down by the kicking team, the offense can pick it up and run it. Yeah, but, but the flag is on the 35-yard line. It, it could be because the Bears had too many players on the field. But they, there you see the ball roll into the end zone. Now it's okay if it's hanging around the goal line. But he's looking up. He doesn't see. Who does he think he's really going to outrun? He almost gets tackled back there for his safety. Now all of a sudden he's out at the 15-yard line. I mean, he gets it on the 20. That's not a smart play. But it wouldn't have been a safety because he didn't come out of the end zone. You've got to come out and then go back in in order for it to be a safety. But, but still, it, yeah, but say, it is dumb. Let, I think it's a dumb play. Let's what say he, just he fumbles. Did. Let's he gets yeah, hit and exactly. fumbles. I mean, nothing good was going to come. Dexter Jackson is not going to outrun the Chicago Bears. The only problem is when he was running with the ball. I think you're right. They must have hit. Uh, 18 guys on the field. Well, yeah, the Bears thought that the ball was down, so half their bench went out, their defense exactly. went out, their kicking team was still on the field. And that's going to cost them. That's yeah, going to cost them five yards. So basically, Silly going to only bring it up to the 18-yard line. I mean, <laughs> they, they, illegal substitution, <laughs> Chicago. The players came off the bench while the ball was still alive. 80 of them. And five yards to the end of the run, first down. It's a good thing it's not five yards a player. They'd be at the goal line by now. <laughs> 6.56 to go first quarter. Still not tied to running out of the end zone. Allstott now the deep man in the eye. Johnson on a little roll. Throws out in the flat. Dilger the tight end to the 23. Let's check in with Chris Berman. Mike, thank you. It seems like a long time ago the New York Jets were 1-4 and four and heading for a free fall. Chad Pennington to Santana Moss. One of Pennington's four TD passes. The Jets win the AFC East, crunching the pack 42-17. And not just a huge win for the Jets, but a crushing loss for the Packers, Boomer, because now Tampa Bay with an opportunity to get a bye in the first round of the playoffs and look for all the world like they were going to have to play next weekend. And Green Bay may have to go to Tampa instead of the opposite. That's right. And wouldn't that be huge? Rob Johnson throws it out incomplete in and out of the hands of Keenan McCardell. 
And here's the AFC playoff picture. They're all set. First round buys for Oakland and hard-charging Tennessee on the wild card weekend. Cleveland against Pittsburgh, Indianapolis against the Jets. And the Jets end up fourth in the conference. They may be. They just may be the best team in the AFC. I guarantee you they're the most dangerous. They're the ones that people better look out for. They could be this year's New England Patriots because Chad Pennington could be this year's Tom Brady. And how about New England and Miami both out of the playoffs? It's stunning. Rob Johnson in rhythm for Keyshawn in complete. Excellent coverage by R.W. McCorders and now a flag. They're calling it against the quarters. Keyshawn, that ball was thrown a little short, and Keyshawn goes up over the top. I tell you what, R.W. McCorders covered him beautifully. Pass interference. 21 defense. That's the first. What you're hearing the screaming is that the ball was not catchable. R.W. McCorders, he is on Keyshawn Johnson. And R.W. is only about 90%. You see him shield inside. That's pass interference on Keyshawn Johnson. That could be, and I saw some lousy calls yesterday in football, that could be one of the worst pass interference calls I have ever seen an official call. That's absolute garbage. It's not the worst. It is, yes, it is. I think that's the worst I've seen this weekend. McCorders <laughs> threw out an arm, and then Keyshawn oh. came right over the top. That is so bad. Rob Johnson under pressure again. He's been sacked twice. Sacked the third time. Phillip Daniels with a tomahawk chop from behind. I'll tell you what. This guy, you know, this is not Rob Johnson's fault. He is trying to throw the ball, and the guy, they weren't open. So when he moves to his left, someone did not block Phillip Daniels, number 93. Watch coming from the right of the screen over here. And he almost breaks his arm. Here comes 93, Phillip Daniels. Look at him. He reached in. He's trying to strip the ball. Rob Johnson did a great job just holding on to this thing. Kenyatta Walker is the right tackle, and he tried to block Phillip Daniels, who's another one of those guys who got hurt in the first game of the season and is playing like a warrior. Daniels with his fifth sack of the year. One tonight, Alfonso Boone has two. Pittman now as they try to run the toss, and Erlacher is oh. right there to make another stop. Brian Erlacher, I'm telling you, don't go try to run side to side with this guy, because this guy is extremely fast. Watch this. Look at the takeoff. He's going right down the line of scrimmage. I mean, that's just speed. What a great angle, too. Oh. Please. He knew where Pittman was going to end up and where he was going to end up. Erlacher has broken Dick Butkus' all-time tackle record. He has gone over 200 for the season. And about a month ago, they were trying to trade him and run him out of town. Not the team. The no, media. The That's media right. The fans. Unbelievable. Third and long. Rob Johnson goes underneath. Jared is <laughs> taken down at the 40. Guess who? Erlacher. You know, he may break the record again tonight. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. I'll tell you, it's funny. Here they are at the University of Illinois. This stadium is not near as big as pro stadiums, all the other professionals, but this place is as loud as anywhere we have been. These Bear fans have come out in full force to support their ball club, and it is loud. Merritt is deep again for Tupa. Erlacher and the Bears defense have already had a tremendous game. They have been on their own almost all year with all the injuries on offense for the Bears. The offense hasn't helped them, and Tupa, an awful kick that takes a Chicago roll outside the 30, only 27 yards on the kick. Erlacher joins some rather select company, legends in Bears history, Ditka, Sayers, and Butkus, as a player selected to the Pro Bowl his first three years. Those records go back to 1960. Now, if you're in the company of Ditka, Sayers, and Butkus, arguably three of the greatest players in the history of the game, not just the Chicago Bears. Do you start well, chiseling the bust now? Yeah, oh, yeah. Big, you know, the guy averages 13 and a half sat, or, uh, tackles a game. 13 and a half tackles a game. Adrian Peterson is in for the first time. John Lynch makes the stop as Peterson goes to the 37. The rookie out of Georgia Southern, if you count playoffs in his college career, he gained over 9,000 yards and 111 touchdowns. Are you kidding? <laughs> I'd give him the ball. 
I'll tell you, the Bears have, are starting to win the field position game. They're on their third possession now. They've started a little further up. Things, this game's going just the way they want it. Peterson again. Got to the 38 and then pushed back. Warren Sapp on the stop. And now we've got pushing and shoving after the play. The Bears certainly showing a lot of emotion in this ball game, perhaps more than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are playing for a great playoff spot. And there is Sean King, who started a week ago, did not play very well at all. But and now, now he may come in in relief. Nine well, of 26. Well, the thing about Rob Johnson is Rob Johnson has been running around for his life. But if Sean King, who is less mobile than Ron Johnson, right. gets the same kind of protection, they'll just tackle him a lot quicker. Burris, he'll take off. Diving for a first down, and he's got it. i tell you what, we're just looking at two frustrated offenses so far. We're only in the first quarter, and we're looking at two frustrated coaches talk, looking at their offensive lines that are really not blocking many people. I think John Gruden's got to be more frustrated with what he sees out of his offense than Dick Jerron. Dick Jerron's just tickled to have people on the field. He's thrilled to have 11 guys lining up. John Shoup said, if a player has a helmet, we expect him to go out and play. And that's about what position the Bears have found themselves in this year, just issuing helmets. Burris. Oh, underneath to Dez White. Derek Brooks hit him, and I don't think there's even footprints left after that. You're lucky his shoes didn't stay in the grass. Derek Brooks, you talk about perfect timing. Watch this. He reads it, sees it. Now look at it. Look at the deliver. Boy, uh, that's head to head. Yeah, but how about Dez holding on to the ball? I mean, that's a darn good job by a receiver hanging on to the football when you run into a wall. <laughs> Pretty good job getting up. Peterson off the right side. No luck. Gang tackled that time. The charge led by Sapp and Spikes. Let's go to Susie. Mike, you mentioned that Burris played up in Canada. Well, after a breakout season with Saskatchewan, he decided he still wanted to follow the NFL dream, mostly because he wanted all the people who had supported him, his friends and his family, to be able to actually see him play. As of Friday morning, that was the first time he found out he was going to start, so his family didn't know. As of Friday afternoon, his sister wound up seeing it on ESPN's The Bottom Line. She called the folks. They have been on top of the world ever since. What an opportunity. Yeah. Got to be so excited for him, Susie, and he's the first Temple University quarterback ever to start an NFL game. He may be the only Henry that ever played the quarterback position. I think in the 40s there was a... Oh, Henry. stop. I do. Bucks may have jumped early. They whistled the play dead. Well, there was movement on the right-hand side of Chicago's line. But did Burris draw them off? Ball start. 57 offense. It's a five yard penalty. Still third down. Olin Krutz, the center. That's the center. That's hard to do. You're the guy in the middle of everything. But Dick Duran has, has seen some tough, tough ball games for his ball club. I mean, they lose to Philadelphia by six. They beat Atlanta by one. They lose to New England by three. They lose to New Orleans by six. They had 20 point leads in two ball games to New Orleans and New England. This is one scrappy group of guys, these Bears. And Dick Duran and the Chicago offense will let the clock run down. You've got to say it's a first quarter win for the Bears. They're tied with the Bucks. Nothing, nothing. Bob, you it's been the Bears defense led by Brian Erlacher, the Pro Bowler. Three years in the league, three Pro Bowls. He has been everywhere, making tackles on running plays, tackles on pass plays, inspiring his teammates, and keeping the Chicago Bears in the ball game. And he, does, he doesn't even know what their record is. He doesn't care. But it's, I'll tell you one thing, it's important that Henry Burris does not make a mistake and let Tampa's defense score. Burris straight back in the pocket, under pressure, lost the ball. 
and they got it back. Warren Sapp knocked it away, and Joe, there's the big mistake you talked about. Well, that, and, and he's lucky to get the ball back. What you think of at this situation, you turn the ball over to Tampa Bay on the 35, they're going to get something out of it. Warren Sapp just pushes his way through on Kevin Dogans and then tries to get in and make the recovery. Elias Wynn knocks it out of his hands. Carl Williams from the 25 crosses the 30 after a 38-yard punt. Here is the NFC playoff picture as it stands right now. Philadelphia, Tampa, Green Bay, and San Francisco are in the wild cards, the Giants and Atlanta. The only question is who finishes second, third, and fourth. If Tampa <laughs> wins, Tampa is second. If Tampa loses, it Green Bay goes to second and gets the bye. Then it's between Tampa Bay and San Francisco for third third and fourth that would not be determined until tomorrow night that there's another not, New York team you better be aware of that's right that's not an only question second third and fourth that's three well all stop pulling his way to the 46 47 yard line well I said about all stop you know don't try to tackle him around the legs because you don't have arms long enough to do that look at how low he is to the ground here comes Erlacher, but Erlacher gets blocked, and one arm on Allstott will not get it done. Watch him unload. Right now, he's going to unload on Brown and R.W. McCorders. He just loves to unload on people. The cement truck going to his sixth straight Pro Bowl is the NFC fullback. Fake the end around, give it to Allstott again. Nothing doing this time. Erlacher right in the middle of it, along with Joe Tafoya, number 99. I talked about the Bears not making a mistake backed up in their own end. I think the thing you have to be concerned with, if you're Brian Erlacher, is trying to knock the ball loose from Mike Allstott. Allstott has fumbled an awful lot. Look where Erlacher hits him. Everybody talked about hitting him high, as high as he can, because Allstott is about a foot and a half off the ground. All you see are shoulder pads and knees. And Joe, to emphasize your point, Allstott has the worst fumble rate of any active running back. And that pass behind Pittman. And Pittman's a little bit upset because he was open. Quarter, they do that. Receivers have a tendency to do that. I agree with you. I mean, it's, kind of, it's tough to do a pirouette and catch a ball. Rob Johnson, you would expect weather and temperatures not to bother him having played in Buffalo all those years. But I think he's having a problem with the wind down on the field. The wind is actually at his back, sort of quartering off his right shoulder. And that would look like it got away from him. He's three out of five, only 17 yards in this ball game. Bears show blitz and come right up the middle. Johnson gets away. Throws on the run and Erlacher nearly had the pick. Oh. He stepped in front of Michael Pittman. Brian Erlacher, all he did was look at the quarterback. And he was not even looking at Pittman. Erlacher was looking at Johnson. And when he sees Johnson step up, number 54 is dropping right in the middle of your screen. Now watch him look at the quarterback. He's got the quarterback. He's going for the football. Rob Johnson was fortunate on that that it was not the big turnover. Tupa will punt to Merritt. Beauty this time. Merritt backpedals to the three and he's crushed. Merritt hit by Corey Ivey and Merritt made the cardinal sin return for a punt returner. He backed straight up inside the 10, caught it, and then caught it from Corey Ivey. You use the 10-yard line as your back line. If the ball goes over your head and you're at the 10-yard line, you just don't field it. How do you make that point to guys? Watch Monday Night Countdown Eastern this week on ESPN2. It's the best place to get ready for Monday Night Football. Then on ABC at 9, the Monday Night Game is Jeff Garcia and the 49ers face Marshall Falk and the Rams. At the beginning of the season, that looked like a blockbuster way to end the year. Well, let me tell you about this game right here, boys. Yes. First guy scores wins. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> I think the rule they're going to put in. That's pretty astute. Whoever scores first wins. It's like an overtime game. 
Burris throws to Booker. All right. And Booker whacked out of bounds up around the 7-8 yard line. Well, oh, I like John Shoup's call, the offensive coordinator. You're back up. Everybody thinks you're going to run. You have a little bit of confidence in your quarterback. You give him a chance to get a little bit more. Marty Booker, what a year he has had. 93 catches, six touchdowns. You got Marcus Robinson coming off of injury. Des White is their third receiver. No tight ends. He really was the only viable guy to throw the football to, and he delivered. Booker, the first wide receiver for the Bears since Dick Gordon in 71 to be chosen to the Pro Bowl. Leon Johnson trying to wedge out some extra yardage up here the 10. When Marty Booker came in to talk to us on Friday, I just said to him, I said, you know, First of all, you don't even know who your quarterback is going to be from day to day. This quarterback change was made Friday morning. That's when they found out that Burris is going to be the quarterback. And he just smiled, and they said 93 catches. What's it like? You know you're being double teamed every time. He just he thought for a second, and then his big grin came on his yeah. face. He said, that's part of the game. But I, I, you brought up a great point, Paul. To be able to go to the Pro Bowl, and, and he should be there because he's played with so many different quarterbacks. Third and three. They try to throw for it again, and this one is knocked away by Brooks. Intended for Gilmore, and then a flag comes down uh, five seconds after the play is over. I got to tell you, Gee it's going to be interesting to see what the call is going to be. You know, just don't touch the official because you'll get 15 and thrown out of the game. Yeah. All right, you threw your flag. Here's Brooks. Is this pass interference? Boy, he, uh, the only thing that would be pass, pass interference, interference is his left arm. But why? Why? Why he couldn't find the flag? It would. Well, I don't know. But it would. The only thing that would be pass interference would be his left arm around the back. And if he's pushing with the left arm, is there? There it is. Is Brooks got him around the waist? No. Well, yeah, he does. You can touch a receiver. You just can't move his can't, body with you, that arm. You can't pull him with it. That's all. But it's an automatic first down and a big one for the Bears. I think that Mike Pereira, the head of officials, is going to have to do a real, real serious job of trying to figure out what it and what is not pass interference in the offseason with his officials. Back in a tight formation, Leon Johnson to the 15-yard line. Let's go to Susie. Mike, this Bucks D has been in the top 10 every year since 97. Never better than third until this year. They are number one, number one in points, yards, and interceptions. The first team to do that since the 85 Bears. Warren Sapp said he believes the difference has been a recommitment to stopping the run. They might be ranked seventh there, but he said that's been the signature, making a team one-dimensional, allowing them to unleash that pass rush. And Susie, I think the other the difference is John Gruden because he's made the offense better and that helps the defense. Burris under pressure. Dives out near the 20, a couple of yards shy of a first down chased by Warren Sapp. I'll add one other thing to that, Michael. I think the fact that Tony Dungy is the head coach in Indianapolis and not in Tampa has given Monty Kiffin a little bit more freedom to possibly do some of the things that he wants to do in a more aggressive style of defense with this ball club of his, with his side of the ball. The but, the only, but the problem is, Joe, they still have the same problem they had for five years. Offense. I think John Gruden will eventually solve that, and it's going to have to start with offensive linemen. You can bet they'll be active in the free agent market and in the draft, and also trying to find a receiver with some speed. This one is wide of Dez White. That one wasn't even close to Dez White, and even if Dez White could have gotten to it, he might have lost a yard. <laughs> because he was going back. They have really run some shallow patterns. And here's the, here's the problem, too. A Maynard has kicked the ball very well in the first quarter, but this is against that win, and there is a strong win when you get the ball up in the air. Eight possessions for the two teams combined, eight punts for the two teams combined. Win knocks that one down. Carl Williams lets it hit, and it will die inside the Tampa Bay 40-yard line. 41-yard kick. The Bucks defense has done its job, but so has the Bears defense. No score, second quarter. It's the most wonderful. 8 million people. Champagne, on the other hand, a city of 63,000. The home of the University of Illinois. 
Rob Johnson on first down can't find anyone then goes underneath. Keyshawn makes the catch in front of R.W. McQuarters. There, Keyshawn, that six-yard route. That was quite a conversation we had with Keyshawn Wasn't last it? night. I, I was, and I told him this. I thought in the last game that they lost to Pittsburgh, I thought he handled himself so well with all the problems that Sean King had throwing the football. He didn't really show his frustrations, and I know how frustrated he was. I thought he handled that very, very well. And he said he had to, or else he might have lost Sean completely. Pressure on Johnson. Dilger, first down in Bears territory to the 43. We talked to Keyshawn and asked him how he thinks he needs to be used to be successful at wide receiver. I believe as a, as a coach and offensive coordinator, you have to know what to do with me. I'm not traditional. You can't just line me up and say, go catch the football. You got to move me around. You got to put me here. You got to do things with me like Coach Gruden is starting to do. You know, starting now, it's a playoff run. I think he's learning a little bit more, and he sees that, so he's putting me in a different position to make plays for him. First down at the 43. More on Keyshawn in just a second. Rob Johnson again, this time to Allstott, down to the 38. Tackle by Roosevelt Colvin. And Joe, you had a conversation with Keyshawn during our meeting. As you see, his career average always been in the 13s, then dipped to 12 two years ago, last year to 11.9, a career high this year at 14.6. He said he did not has not gone to John Gruden and said, hey, look, why don't you try this? And you said, hey, that should be your responsibility, not to whine about it, but to go to John Gruden and say, you know, I could be effective doing this, and he wasn't really buying into it. Well, the thing was, he had never done it before, but I think as John Gruden and Keyshawn grow together, they will use him more and in different ways. All stop. Little cutback and takes it to the 35. Joe Tafoya made the tackle there. We didn't have a conversation with Keyshawn. He had one with us. <laughs> I mean, if you listen to the guy. I think, you know what? Sitting with him last night, he's always had an air about him of confidence and borders, not even borders. He's a cocky guy, and I like that about him. But I really felt like he is settling into understanding his role. We saw him blow up earlier in the year on the sidelines. It doesn't matter with John Gruden. He spreads, he spreads the ball around. Keyshawn just wants to make plays. Oh, he's out there yelling at the sideline right now. And that's why. It looked like they came out in the wrong formation, and he's trying to tell Rob Johnson, hey, something isn't right. He was looking to the sideline, and Rob Johnson, last play, either Keyshawn was in the wrong place or someone else was. And it's tough to tell who made the mistake here, Joe. Well, it's probably Rob Johnson, because they've already had a formation problem before. Third down, can they keep the drive going? Rob Johnson in the flat, and it's the tight end Ricky Dudley, the former Oakland Raider. They've got the first down. Jerry Azuma made the tackle. You know, it's nice when you got a guy like Keyshawn, though, when he comes in motion back to this side, they respect him. So this now allows Ricky Dudley, number 88, to get out into the flat as a tight end and pick up the first down. It's another thing. It's nice to have a Ricky Dudley who's the only guy on the offense that has played in this offense for Gruden in Oakland. I mean, John Gruden's his entire assistance, and, and really other than Ricky Dudley, nobody's been exposed to him or his offense. Deepest penetration of the night for either club. Johnson fakes, then in trouble. Down he goes. The fourth sack of the night for the Bears defense. Mike Green, the safety, got it. Why don't you just throw the ball away? Rob Johnson is never going to be near the quarterback he can be if he continues to play bonehead plays like, throw it away. You're in field goal position. Throw the ball away, Rob. What I don't understand, it too, is right why, you, why are you even trying to go deep when your offensive line is not blocking anybody? And they're lining up Chicago on the line of scrimmage. They're coming after you, and you're trying to throw a deep route. You don't have time. But that's the, you've got to have trust in your quarterback. That's why Brad Johnson is so vital to this offense. Pittman off the left side as Zuma makes the tackle as he reaches the 31. One of the problems with a mobile quarterback like Brad or Rob Johnson is that he can create a lot of stuff 
doesn't have to give up on plays. One of the negatives for Rob Johnson is he won't give up on plays. See, Mike, it doesn't, it, it's not mobile quarterbacks. This is a problem that is solely Rob Johnson. I was a mobile quarterback. You have to know where you are on the field. You can't take sacks when you have possible opportunities for field goal positions. That's a part of thinking the position through. Third and long. From here, it would be about a 48-yard field goal attempt. Pittman, blockers in front. Chance for a big play, and Pittman down to the 29-yard line. Very close to the first down sticks. All right, does he have it, Paul? If he gets to the, if he no, gets no, no. to the, wait a minute, I'm just telling you, I don't know where the ball is spotted, but if the ball spotted at the 19, he's got it. Okay, because you're good at this. I'll tell you what, Pittman, you talk about following your blockers. Look at this. Kit Dilger out, out front, number 85, and he just reads everything. Where they, they peel everybody off, and he cuts back to the inside. All three of this the is blockers. This is a first down. All three of the blockers out front. It's a first down. Got blocks for him. They sure did. All three of them. Cozy Coleman, the right guard. Kenyatta Walker, the right tackle, and Ken Dilger, the tight end. Each one of them got somebody downfield. And that says something about what they want to do tonight. Third and 12, and they go with a toss sweep. And Michael Pittman is frustrated also because he feels like he could be a much bigger part of this offense, but he has to split time with Mike Allstock. Six, a little bit like Warwick Dunn's situation, doesn't it? Six carries, 39 yards for Pittman. It sounds exactly like Warwick Dunn's situation. First down, Bucks. Allstock back in there. Barrels down to the 15. Let's check in with Susie. Mike, it's really beyond clear that Brad Johnson made this offense go. He's a leader. He's accurate. He's smart. And the numbers show, I mean, he takes what's there. He realizes there is no reason to force things. Not when you've got the number one defense on your side. This season, he tossed a franchise best 22 touchdowns with just six interceptions. The second highest passer rating in the NFC. He has just been exceptional all year. Has a severe lower back bruise. If they win, they get a bye. That would be huge for them. Second down, Pittman. Same play they had the big play on. Pittman this time taken down by Bobby Howard is in there for the injured Warwick Holdman. Keep in mind, last week against Pittsburgh Steeler, Steelers on Monday, this is where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers had their problems. They went down 17-zip in that ball game quick. But they were inside the five-yard line twice and put the ball on the ground. One time, it was by Rob Johnson. The other one, it was by Mike Allstock. And I don't think there's any question here that you run the football. <laughs> I'll be very honest. I wouldn't oh, even I like, take a chance. I like play action. <laughs> you always did. Yeah, well, yeah, you do. Third and three. Split backs behind Rob Johnson. He wants to throw under pressure and throws it away. I said that your time, best chance he didn't to, risk the sack. Well, your best chance is to run the football. The pressure to Roosevelt Cole. I mean, he all the things you want to say about the guy is is one thing that Gruden says about him is, is to, what I want is consistency. And I'm not getting that. Okay. And here's a guy, first of all, that he's in there playing and he doesn't have enough time to throw the ball. And I I, I agree with you. You take dumb sacks, you should throw the ball away. But when you don't have time, it's incredible. This will be a 30-yard attempt by Martin Gramatica to break a scoreless deadlock. 27-34 this year. And Gramatica knocks it right down the middle. And the Bucks finally get on the scoreboard. They're on top of the Chicago Bears in Champaign. 3-0. Warren Sapp trying to boot. That sometimes he shows you great things. He has exceptional talent. But sometimes he feels like he needs to be the lead story on the local news and get the headline and makes the big mistake or doesn't throw the ball away. Peterson and Merritt are deep, and Peterson lets it go over his head, out of bounds. They'll start from the 20-yard line. She's a tennis star, a supermodel, and an international phenomenon. She's Anna Kornikova, and we'll take you on location for an inside look at her 2003 calendar shoot, A Date with Anna, Monday at 9 Eastern on ESPN. Paul and Joe will be watching. I can assure you. You have a date with I, Anna? What time Janet's is that? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Oh yes. Nah. I'm not allowed. Nah, 
That's, I wish she'd play some better tennis so we'd see more of her. She's always gone in the first round. Take a look at that calendar, you'll see more of her. They go with an empty backfield for Burris. Finally sets his feet and throws wide open. John Gilmore, the tight end, a gain of 30. This is all Burris because you, first of all, you can't cover anybody this long. And now you give this guy enough time. Watch what, and he gets the time himself. Look at this, the rush is on, he slides, he sets, he steps up, and then he gets himself in a position to throw the football. And I think it's amazing being that John Gilmore is the only tight end the Chicago Bears have. They've lost Lyman, they've lost Davis. He's the only guy, and he's played the last four games being the only guy. Gilmore, the only one left at that spot. Empty backfield again, and John Shoup apparently has made the decision to come out gunning on this possession. Underneath to Booker, his second catch. Now 95 for the year. Al Singleton made the tackle. Well, you, what you got to do is you got to get Tampa Bay out of that seven and eight guys in the box. And if you can do that by just a couple of throws, that one to the tight end will get him out of it. That one he just threw right there for seven yards will get him out of it. Burris getting the chance to play with Jim Miller on IR and Chris Chandler hurt again. He is the third quarterback. Had not started a game since the year 2000 in the Canadian Football League. Right now, his club driving, affecting Dallas and Tampa Bay. Rich McKay with Susie Colbert. Rich, we've all watched with interest on Bill Parcells' possible return to coaching, perhaps with the Cowboys. How are the Bucks still involved in this? Well, we're still involved because we wanted to make sure all the teams knew that last year, Coach Parcells did execute a contract to coach the team, then decided to back out. Accordingly, uh, under the NFL rules, they've got to call us before they talk to Coach Parcells. We had not really anticipated him coming back to coaching because he kind of told our owners when he backed out, he would never be back, but uh, lo and behold, he is. Would the Bucks expect some sort of compensation then? Yes. What are the next steps with the league? Well, we'll wait and see. Well, we, you know, we, we want to make sure everybody knew we wanted, we thought really the season would end before anybody would talk to any coaches, but I guess they're speeding up the process. So we put everybody on notice today to make sure they call us, and we'll, we'll it'll get worked out in the next couple days. Thanks, Rich. Good luck in the play. Thanks very much. Burris scrambling. Got a block from Shelton. Dives to the 39. Got to say one thing about Rich McKay. I respect him as much as I respect anybody in the National Football League. He was hung out to dry last year in the search for a new coach to replace Tony Dungy. Of course, Tony Dungy was hung out to dry as well. But Rich McKay decided to come back anyway. He has been a tremendous general manager for that ball. Does that mean Jerry Jones has tampered with uh, Tampa Bay's goods? And he had a conversation about the yeah, 11 yeah. hours worth of a conversation, but they never discussed the job. I realize that. Okay. <laughs> Burris making plays on this drive. And right up the gut, Adrian Peterson. Rondé Barber with the tackle, a gain of 14 for the rookie out of Georgia Southern. Look what? at this. I mean, the blocking up front is just superb. And there goes Peterson up inside. I'll tell you what, that offensive line, once they sniff something, you got to remember, you know, in their first 17 plays, they only gained 34 yards. In the last four plays, they've gained about 60. The thing about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is they get their safeties involved in run support as well as anybody. Dexter Jackson and John Lynch. When you spread them out across the field, the safeties can't get up in the box as easily. It makes it easy for Henry Burris to read from a passing standpoint, but also it boils down to one-on-one -on -one blocking by the guys up front. So once he breaks that line, He's got some running room. And it is not a big defensive line for the Bucs. That is their one weakness. They have that great speed and quickness. They do not have the size. First down, Bears driving to take the lead. Burris with a blitz coming in. It's intercepted. Brooks. Derek Brooks back to the 35. He's had three interception returns this year. Almost had another one. 43 yards on the return. Let me tell you something. He is one of the smartest defensive players in the game today. And you watch number 55, Derek Brooks. He's got his eye on the quarterback, and he jumps this ball. 
Look at how quick he was. I mean, that was just perfect play by a defensive linebacker. Watch this. He just jumps it. He knows he's going to try to throw the ball to Marty Booker. And he is set. The way he was set up defensively, he was on the far left side of the center. The other two linebackers had committed up into coverage and blitzing, and he slid all the way over to make the play. Huge break turned in by the Buccaneer defense. They set up shop at the 34. Bears show blitz. Rob Johnson, room to run if he wants. Instead, he throws Keyshawn inside the 20 to the 18-yard line where Mike Green made the stop. I was just thinking about something. We really have good games on Sunday night. I don't care who's playing. Don't we? No. Doesn't make any difference who's playing. I'd watch us. <laughs> I mean, I would tune in on Sunday, 8.30 Sunday night Eastern time. I don't care what's going on. I'm going to watch football because I know it's going to be a good football game. And I love listening to you two guys. <laughs> Pittman reverses his field. Paul, why don't we get rid of him and see if he tunes in? I'll tell you what. He, you know, he's looking for a compliment. You're not getting it, so keep quiet. <laughs> well, but all, the Bucks only have one timeout. Remember, Brad Johnson burned a couple of them. They're down to 16 seconds. I don't know why he's running around here. Spike the ball, do something. This is a... Uh, Boy, they wasted a lot of time before they did that. Coming up at the half, Chris Berman will be along with the Kia Halftime Show, our fastest three minutes, the big sticks, and the complete playoff picture, at least as complete as can be up to this point. Now, this is what's going to happen with 11 seconds for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I want you to listen because this is what's going to happen. They're going to run a play. If it's caught inbounds, they're going to use their timeout to get the field goal kicker on. I don't believe that they're going to try and throw the ball in the end zone. I just don't think they're going to, I don't think he's going to have enough time to do it. Rob Johnson to throw. Into the end zone. Keyshawn tipped and incomplete. Green was there. Jerry Azuma was man to man. And Keyshawn could not make the catch. Now six seconds left. Here comes Grammatica. I think everybody on the Chicago Bear team knew the Keyshawn. <laughs> if there's going to be a throw into the end zone, it's going to be Keyshawn. It's just like on the last intercept or the interception that Burr's threw. Everybody had to believe Marty Booker was the guy. Grammatica, who has already hit from 30, will try from 32. And Grammatica makes it a 6 nothing Tampa Bay lead. So they take advantage of the turnover. Brooks with another big play on defense. He's made a slew of them all year long. Let's go to Susie. She has more on Derek. Well, Mike, Derek Brooks, the first linebacker in NFL history to return three interceptions for touchdowns. He also scored on a fumble this year, giving him four touchdowns on turnovers, one shy of the NFL record. He said during the season, because it had been quite a while since he had returned one for a touchdown, John Gruden actually called him out in front of the whole team and said, you're in a slump. What's the problem? Well, he kind of got a laugh out of that, but he certainly would like to get one more, break that record tonight. Susie, all he needed was one more block on that interception return, and he would have tied Kenny Houston's record. And for those of you who don't remember Kenny Houston, he was as good a player who ever played this game. I was lucky enough to play with him with the Washington Redskins. Boy, was he, made, he made a great made a great tackle in the Dallas game. Best tackle I ever saw. He saved the game. Did he stop from getting in the end zone? It's right on the goal line. Made a great tackle. Peterson and Merrick. Golden Richards comes to mind, but I'm not sure that's nah, right. It's a running back. Squib kick for Tampa Bay. This will be the last play of the half, and Ahmad Merritt trying to break it. A nice return, but not enough. And time expires in the first half. The Buccaneers get two field goals. And that's it against Brian Erlacher and that Bears defense. But they have a 6-0 lead at the half in their quest to get the bye in the playoffs. Let's go to Susie. John, is your third starting quarterback in three weeks. How much confusion is there out there? Well, we have a little bit. Honestly, we just got to do a better job. Rob staying close to the huddle and letting everybody know who's playing where, and Rob will do a better job in the second half. 
Under what circumstances would we see Sean King? We're going to play Rob. But we're going to do everything we can to rally around our quarterback and win tonight. Thanks, Sean. Right. Thank you, Susie. Our score here at Memorial Stadium, the Bucks six, the Bears nothing. Now let's join Chris Berman for the Kia Halftime Show. Hi, Michael. Thank you, and uh, Happy New Year to everybody out there. Is this the night that the Buccaneers finally and the first time in their... Tonight, two Pro Bowl linebackers have set the tone for a defensive battle from Champaign. Brian Erlacher has led a feisty Bears defense, and Derek Brooks has helped keep Tampa Bay in the lead. Welcome back to Champaign, everybody. We're at Memorial Stadium at the University of Illinois. Six nothing. Buccaneers over the Bears, and Chicago will get the ball first as we start the second half of play. There's Erlacher, who got off to a sensational start. And Brooks nearly had his fifth touchdown return of the season. Peterson and Merritt are deep. Grammatica to kick for Tampa. Merritt from the 10. To the 34-yard line. Well, we have seen the problem for the Bucks tonight, the absence, if nothing else, of Brad Johnson, who was a quarterback who probably should have made the Pro Bowl this year. They are hoping against hope that he'll be back next week if they have to play, but really hoping they won't have to play next week, get the bye. Well, if I were Tampa, I would not allow him to throw the ball deep or even call a deep pattern. I wouldn't call anything over 12 yards and run the football wide. I think if you're the Bears, I think you play it close to the vest. You're looking for a turnover opportunity. Your offense moved the ball okay, but still not good enough to put you in a position where you can go make plays. I think you still have to make this a defensive game and protect that side of the ball. Burris quickly out to Booker, got by Brooks and out of bounds. Moments ago, Susie Culver caught up. With Dick Geron of the Bears. Coach, how satisfied with your quarterback? Well, Henry did a pretty good job, except for the pick. You know, he holds the ball a little too long sometimes. And against this defense, if it's open, it's just open very quickly. It closes down so fast, especially with Derek Brooks. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. You have to feel for Dick Duran the way he has been besieged by injuries. There's the quarterback comparison. Burris, 54 yards, five out of eight, but the one big pick. Leon Johnson. Swallowed up by that defense, about a yard shy of a first down. This is a big third and I'm sorry. You no, know, I was just, you know, Joe, we're talking to Jerron on Friday. You just, you just wonder how this guy could be so calm. I, I mean, his insides have got to be going nuts because just trying to, field an offensive team and a defensive team. But I think he realizes that this is part of the game of football and that I think they're closer to the 13-3 and three team they were a year ago than they are to the ball club that has lost so many games this year. They've been in a lot of games with very, very few people to manage. Leon Johnson out of the eye, and if he crosses the 45, he has the first down. He crossed it. They have it. I think one of the things that the league could do to help out injury situations is increase the practice squad. At least be able to have a pool of players that know the system, that are familiar with what you're doing, so that you can go into it when you start to lose players. And I think more probably of the Arizona Cardinals than anybody else who got hit at the wide receiver position losing four of them. And the Bears in their offensive line who have lost so many. At least it would... It would keep the team very competitive. How about their quarterback situation? The same thing. They have had 46 starters this year. Booker's going to throw. Beautifully covered by the Bucks. They diagnosed the play perfectly. On offense, the injuries have been devastating. Jim Miller missed eight, played a lot more, hurt their top running back. The A-train on injury reserve. David Terrell, a guy they counted on at wide receiver. Then two tight ends, Davis and Lyman. Mark Colombo was their top draft pick. He was going to start at left tackle. The starting left guard, Rex Tucker. Kruitz and Valerio both, both missed time up front. Colombo, they, they, you know, they were talking about this is their number one draft pick. And this young man, it, it, you know, there's Chandler there. But it, it, Colombo was a guy that, that was really coming along. And he said, it's, you know, it's, it's a shame when anybody gets hurt, but they, they could have really used this guy. 
Officials going to whistle this play dead. It looked like the play clock ran down. Five yard penalty, still second down. And the Bears offensive situation, these are the kind of mistakes they cannot make. Well, they cannot make them, but you know, you're asking this guy, Henry Burris, you know, for, for the time, it's his first start ever in the National Football League. I said in the beginning, he's starting against the number one defensive team. The guy's handling himself pretty well. You look at the way the safeties are what he's interested in. He wants to know where these guys are. The guys back up, Lynch and, and Jackson. Burris nearly picked by Jackson. It was intended, it appeared, for Booker, but not really close to him. Well, they had a guy in front of Booker and a guy behind Booker, and there was really no place to throw the football except to a Tampa Bay guy. We also know now that Henry Burris has got himself an arm. I mean, that was Singleton almost makes the play. He's right, right there almost having an opportunity to make the play except that Booker never really turned inside. Dexter Jackson just wound up getting away from him. Third and 15 for the Bears from their own 41. Empty backfield. The Bucks come with a four-man line. Done a nice job against Simeon Rice, and now he gets pressure on Burris. Rice just missed him, and Burris throws it away. Simeon Rice with 15 and a half sacks this year, number two in the NFL to Jason Taylor. Nearly got 16 and a half there, which would have matched his career high. The Simeon Rice show you some speed. Watch this, folks. Now, Burris is pretty quick himself. And look at this. Burris, and here comes Simeon. He's closing, and Burris feels it. That's just a nice throw to get out of there. If Mike Gandy doesn't grab the back of his shirt, he might catch him. Rice, who played his college ball right here at Memorial Stadium. Maynard kicks to Carl Williams. And it goes out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. So the Bears, on their first possession of the second half, fail to move it. And the Bucks will have it back with a 6-0 lead. Really? The family's bust down, yeah. Uh, Dick Geron talked to Jeff Fisher, of course, with the Titans that had to deal with all that moving around and got some nice conversation with him to figure out what to do. Pittman whacked as he got to the 15. Here's a look at the artist's rendition of the new stadium. It will open in September of 2003. The colonnades in the south wall have been untouched, and the new stadium is built within the existing exterior. The new stadium will have 61,500 seats. There's going to be 17 acres of new lakefront parkland for the public, and it only cost $606 million. Oh. Nice. That guy that won the lottery doesn't even have no. a chance to do that. Rob Johnson throwing underneath to Keyshawn out across the 20-yard line where Bobby Howard made the tackle. One of the things that we talked about Tampa Bay and their offense, and, and I think if their offensive line struggles in the playoffs, they're going to struggle. I mean, it's going to be a problem for them. That's why Brad Johnson getting back is so important. But they really need to add somebody who can run, a speed receiver to this receiving core. Everybody's about the same. Joe Juravicious, Keenan McCardell. Keyshawn Johnson, they're all about the same size and same speed. Third and a yard. Pittman is the deep man, and Rob Johnson on the bootleg. 30, 35 down the sideline and takes a shot. Of course. Refusing to go out of bounds before contact. 21-yard gain. But Michael Pittman is the guy that makes this play. You have to have the running back sell the fake. There goes Allside. Look at Pittman. He's going in like he has it, and he's going to leap like he's going for the first down. What a sellout job. That's so great. That has to happen to convince the Bears that he has the ball. Now, Rob, you got the first down. Run out of bounds. Nah. I'm sorry. I'm Rob Johnson. We asked, we asked him the other day, he said, have you finally learned to run out of bounds or slide? He said, yeah, well, no. <laughs> He is just too much of a competitor to do it. All Stott runs into a wall, then turns and picks up a couple out of it. <laughs> That's the first time I've ever seen All Stott stopped in his tracks. And that defensive line hit the offensive line, and he goes right up into the middle of it and gets hammered. But he ends up picking up here. Watch this. You want to see this stop? Here's his offensive line. They're getting going backwards, so they run right into him. But watch his awareness. All Stott turns, gets his shoulder square again, and guess who hits him? Erlacher. 
That's Brian Robinson and Philip Daniels on the right side just created a wall. Rob Johnson, pressure coming. Has a chance to run. Get down. Cut down at the 48-yard line. Mike Green from his strong safety spot. One thing about Brian Urlacher, if you're going to try and block him, he's going to go through you and get to the play. The one thing about him is he looks for the ball. Look at this. they got a blocker in front. He still makes the tackle. Watch his feet. He's not looking at anything but the ball carrier. Now he's in coverage. Watch him close on a wide receiver. He has got such tremendous speed, and now this is almost the interception. If he catches it, he would have probably run over all the offensive linemen. Third and four, Rob Johnson with 29 yards on the ground has outrushed any Chicago running back so far tonight. Blitz coming. Johnson has it tipped at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete. There is a flag down back at the 39. Hand, hands to the face against Tampa Bay. I think if you're the Bears, you decline this. I think you decline the penalty and make them punt. Illegal use of hands, 67 offense, hands to the face, penalty is declined, fourth down. That's Kenyatta Walker, the right tackle. <laughs> John Gruden is working real hard to get the kind of plays that he wants called and to get them executed by Rob Johnson. Leon Johnson drops back to the 15-yard line. Line drive kick, Leon Johnson on a dead run and takes it up to the... Nine minutes and 12 seconds to go in the third quarter play from Champaign, Illinois. The Bucks on top of the Bears, 6-0. Chicago takes over at its own 33. They have simply not been able to move the ball tonight. Adrian Peterson is in at running back behind the rookie quarterback, Burris. Peterson... Shakes one tackle and takes it to the 37. Let's go to Chris Berman. All right, Mike, thank you. Scoring 11 points late at Foxborough against Miami to tie in. Then Mr. Automatic, Adam Vinatieri, 35-yard field goal, good. Bill Belichick pass beat the Dolphins 27-24, but both missed the playoffs. That is staggering, isn't it, Chris? The fact that both of those teams out of the playoffs and when we saw Denver and Miami earlier in the year we thought they were the best two teams in the league Shelton out of the backfield the big fullback gets the first down and Ricky Williams had a brilliant season for the Dolphins and you wonder as he sets a team record for rushing 1853 and they had that great defense how they could possibly miss the playoffs. Well, I can tell you Jay Fiedler Jay Fiedler breaks his thumb Ray Lucas takes two or three games to get his feet wet. They wind That's up the losing answer. some crucial ball games, and they, they lose to the Minnesota Vikings at the end of the season, who played better, but still, the Dolphins should have beat them. The Bears, one big play from taking the lead. Booker, too high for Peterson as he pumped deep and then tried to go underneath. You know, you were talking about pass interference, and they've got to determine what is pass interference or not. Against Fletcher in that game, the Miami game, that yeah. was not pass interference. And it put the ball down on the two-yard line You're right. for New England. And, and that's basically, you know, I mean, they gave a lot away in that game, but that was a, that call should have never been made. The Minnesota Green Bay game that we did, they called a, an interference call on Corey Chavis that the league basically said was not one. So I, I think it really needs to be defined for the officials. Peterson on the toss, tries to take it outside. Got away from John Lynch, pushed out of bounds at the 41st down. Well, there's Tough something run by Peterson. There's something you don't see very often uh -uh. is John Lynch missing a tackle. It could because he's got him and he, he just put his hand on his chest and he said, hey, that's on me. Number 47 is Lynch. Watch the clean shot he has right there. I mean, he just he wanted to unload and he didn't wrap him up. He barely knocks Peterson off stride. Yeah. That's how strong this young man is. He's 5'10", 208. Looks a little bit, a little bit, you know, Barry Sanders-ish, Thurman Thomas, Emmett Smith, that style and size of back. John Lynch, who missed that tackle, 
five Pro Bowls going again this year. And the Bears, with a renewed sense of offensive urgency, this team loaded with Pro Bowlers again. Allstott going to his sixth. Simeon Rice, his first with the Bucks, second overall. Sapp and Brooks, their sixth. Lynch, their fifth. And believe me, some guys get to the Pro Bowl on reputation. These guys earned it. And well, Brent, there's one other guy, Brad Johnson. Brent, I knew you were going to say it. I mean, he you know, deserved to be there. I think Michael Vick is a tremendous athlete. I do not believe he is a Pro Bowl quarterback. But he goes, and congratulations to him. But Brad Johnson's a guy that should be there. Brad Johnson had 22 touchdown passes and six interceptions. Just six. Blitz coming. Nice decision that time by Burris to get rid of it. <laughs> nice decision. Let me tell you something. When you roll out and you got four white shirts looking you in the face and your team is in dark blue, watch this, boys. Here comes Sapp. Look at this guy. He sees all of these guys coming, and it's time to bail. Now, that shows some smarts. That's, that's, now, if that was Rob Johnson, he'd try and outrun him and probably get smashed. <laughs> That's why I said good decision. Oh, great decision. Well, Warren Sapp has had himself a game in a quiet way. He's all over the place. Was listed as questionable coming into this game. You think he doesn't love to play? Oh, he doesn't love to play. Every down. Another blitz. Burris on the run and throws, and Booker never got his head around, and the ball whistled past him. I mentioned Warren Sapp has had himself a quiet game. Quiet so that we haven't talked about it, but hustles all over the place. There he is making the tackle on Leon Johnson. Now he slides over and puts Peterson on the ground. Slides all the way around Peterson again. Look at him hustle. Get out, trip up Burris. Now the Whether crowd boos because the Bears send on the punting team from the 39-yard line. And you, you, you just have to wonder with this offense how many times they're going to get this close to have a shot. Williams lets it go, and it makes the end zone. 38-yard kick, a net of 18, and Tampa Bay will take over from its own 20. When you do that, they should boot. Well, the Bears did, and so did the fans. We'll be back after this. Bears 6 nothing. Welcome back to the University of Illinois Memorial Stadium, our Sunday night telecast. What a... <laughs> My boy had a flashback. <laughs> he's, he's all right. He's going bad, but he's all right. It was a wonderful day to watch football games, especially for a Giants or a Jets fan. Yeah. Well... <laughs> Yeah, it really was. You know, and it was amazing because when we did Miami at Denver, we thought, we here are the two best teams we've right. seen this year. Neither one of them are in the playoffs. No, I, I think the Miami Dolphins have to be the most shocking. And the New Orleans Saints. That's got to be the other team that you look at and say, how in heaven's name don't they make it? But congratulations to everybody that's going to be in the postseason tournament. The Saints have collapsed at the end two years in a row. Pittman goes to the outside, running hard, takes it up to the 28-yard line. I'll tell you what we're seeing tonight. We're seeing running backs that are running with authority because the reason they have to is because they're not getting much blocking, so they have to do it mostly on their own. Well, we're not seeing passers throwing with authority. That's, That's true. been a problem. That's true. And, I, and the essence of it, I think, for Tampa Bay has there been their inability to block on the offensive line for pass protection, and the Bears have just not been able to complete them. Pittman has rushed for 58 yards tonight. Rob Johnson has thrown for only 65. Pittman picks up a couple of more. Yeah, crosses to 30 and should have a first down. But Rob Johnson has rushed for 29. Yes, he has. Out of fear. No, the one was a legitimate bootleg. Yep. That was a legitimate bootleg. The other stuff is out of fear. I think John Gruden does an excellent job of working through adversity on an offensive line. So, uh, an offensive. This offense is nowhere near where he wants it from a personnel standpoint, but they're on the verge of winning 12 football games with it. Then 12 would be a franchise record. Johnson back to throw, looks to Keyshawn and hits him up near the 35-yard line. Bobby Howard with another tackle. He's on the verge of winning 12 games with the number one defense. 
Second and seven. Well, I, but, I, but I think the offense, and we talked about it before, I think his offense has helped his defense. I think the intensity level that he's brought has raised it on that side. One of the things he mentioned last night when we talked to him was he said problems are magnified on offense when you hold the ball. That means problems in the offensive line, problems not getting receivers downfield. That's one thing Rob Johnson is doing is holding the ball a little too long. Pittman on the toss again, cuts it back. And taken down at the 38-yard line, Alfonso Boone, who already had a couple of sacks in this game, peels back to make a tackle. He's starting for Keith Trailer. Well, Pittman is trying to get to the outside. You're going to see, and Keyshawn Johnson is out there trying to make a block. But what, watch Pittman. He sees there's nothing there, and he, that move right back to the inside. Just great pursuit back by the defense. Alfonso Boone saves the first down. Now, the offensive line is a big part of it, but Pittman has not given them the big plays that they hoped for when they got him as a free agent from Arizona. Johnson with time throws over the middle to Keyshawn Johnson up near midfield. Keyshawn came into this game already over a thousand yards for the season. Michael one other point on what you said about Michael Pittman not giving them the big runs. Big runs come from wide receivers getting down the field and throwing blocks. These are the routes that the wide receivers are running for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're only 10 or 12 yard routes so the defense is never really stretched enough so that a running back when he gets to that second level has a chance to utilize his speed. Keyshawn, five catches, 41 yards tonight. The Bucks have moved it. They got a 20 to midfield. Excuse me, they got to throw a flag. They had too many guys in the huddle. They had illegal substitution. Yeah. 12 men in the huddle. That's a five-yard penalty. Still first down. Let's go to Susie. More on Keyshawn. Hey guys, people will always judge him or prejudge him based on the title of his book, Just Give Me the Damn Ball. But what you read isn't always what you get. Brad Johnson said based on the book, he wouldn't have wanted to play with him. But from a quarterback's perspective, he is one of the easiest wide receivers in the NFL to work with. Vinny Testaverde will attest to that. And Rob echoed it last night. He said he doesn't complain. He doesn't ask for the ball. And few receivers go over the middle with as much reckless abandon. Susie, you're absolutely right. A quarterback is going to love this guy. Rob Johnson screened to Pittman. Look at the blocking in front. Pittman. There's a big play inside the 35 to the 34, a gain of 21. Here's one of the few times this year, really, that I've watched the back finally wait on his blockers. Pittman could have outrun these guys, but he waits on them to let these guys get in front to open the hole. Now watch this thing that when it comes out. It's on the right-hand side of your screen. Watch, see the lineman in front of him? Now watch Pittman use him. He just waits, he just waits for his lineman to block. Kerry Jenkins, Jeff Christie, the center, Mike Allstott, you see him out shadowing up on R.W. McQuarters. That's the 58th catch of the season for Pittman, who has been actually more effective as a receiver than he has been a running back. Allstott is in there at the tailback spot now, and Allstott bores his way down to the 30. <laughs> bores? I love bores. Bores? He's not boring. No, no, he said he... B-O-R-E. Oh, B-O-R-E. Okay. Same thing, but there different meaning. I'll I, tell you what, you know it's the end of the year when you got to start spelling things for him. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you should have a little board out here. I'll get spells for you. A little Scrabble board. I get points. If I get it right, I get points. <laughs> oh, man. Don't use big words like bores. No, bore. Singular. It is late, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's late. Good drive so far for the Bucks. Rob Johnson out in the flat. McCardell pushed out of bounds at the 24-yard line. You could probably hear the Bears yelling at the officials. That's a pick. They said it was a pick by Keyshawn. Keyshawn Johnson, they're yelling, pick, 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 and nobody called it. Let me show you what happens when you run the routes. This is going to be, there you'll see Keyshawn go in and you'll see McCardell come out. And what they're yelling is that Keyshawn picked the coverage. There it is right there. He didn't pick anybody. No, he didn't. Nope. No, it was just a good route. Didn't have anybody close enough to pick him. The Bucks already up 6-0 trying to get some insurance. Pittman lunges down to the 21-yard line. I think this is an excellent place on the field on second down. I always think this is a good down to throw on. 
Don't wait till you get to third where you get to third and five or third and six. I think it's a good place with the mobility of a Rob Johnson. Run a little play action because you've established some run. Get him on the edge and allow him to either run for the first down or throw to one of the receivers. Johnson and McCardell both go to the left side. Now McCardell comes in motion. Pittman. To the 18-yard line. Bobby Howard has had a slew of tackles tonight. And in a rapidly moving game, the third quarter is gone. The Bucks trying for a buy in the playoffs are up by have reached the Chicago 18-yard line. And this quarter they, six nothing. This quarter, sorry, Michael has they have the wind at their back. All start is the setback. Rob Johnson to throw on a little half roll. McCardell has the first down at the 13. Greg Blosh, the defensive coordinator of the Bears, wanted to stay aggressive in this game and basically has. It's just that what Tampa Bay has been able to do against his defense is they finally have been able to run the ball up front. One of, as we showed the list of people that missed games, they lost Ted Washington and Keith Trailer is not playing in this game. You're talking about about 700 pounds of beef in the middle. That's just not there to help stop the run. That's USDA Prime, too. Pittman swallowed up as he got maybe a yard. Did you notice in that third quarter when they had the ball that they did not throw anything deep or even attempt to they throw don't. anything deep? And I think it's going to catch up with them. I believe that to have this offense get some points on the board, get some cheap scores, get some quick scores, they're going to have to do it. Not necessarily this year with these people, but they're going to need to add that element. You've got Keyshawn, Keenan McCardell, and Joe Jerovicious, basically the same kind of receiver. Right, you need somebody who can get it down, a 4-3 guy. Johnson. Taken down at the 16-yard line. Phillip Daniels with the fifth Bears sack of the night. He's uh, he's working his way. I think he's close to 100 sacks now. I mean, you know, a lot of guys, 100 catches, 100 this, 100 that. Well, Rob Johnson is, is heading for 100 sacks in three years. It's, it's incredible. He has no place to throw the ball. But the thing about it is he did tuck it away because they're already in field goal And range. he did protect the ball, but yes. he didn't protect himself. I mean, it's, it's a little bit... Good. He's got a target on there, Joe. The guy really, really works. Works it a little too long sometimes. Third and 12. Johnson wants the screen, but the Bears have it covered perfectly and throws it away. Good, Good decision that time. Boy, and there's a flag down about the five-yard line. I'll tell you, the Bears, they got pass interference. It's offensive pass interference. Oh. And I think it's Ricky Dudley. What a huge mistake by the Bucks. Well, I think you've got to back them up, make the field goal tougher. Pass interference, 19 offense. That penalty is declined, fourth Whoa. down. That's Keyshawn. Here comes Keyshawn now. Here's where you'll see the, there. there. You know why they called it? They called it because it was a screen, and Keyshawn's not looking back, but the clock in his head says the ball should be gone. This is what we practice, and it wasn't. This is 33 yards. If they'd taken the penalty, it would have been 43, but Gramatica converts, and it's 9-0 Buccaneers working their way. And we have a 9-0 Buccaneers lead over the Bears, 13-12 to go in the ball game. Peterson and Merritt are deep. And Merritt backed up three yards in the end zone. There is a flag in the flag. They'll start from the 20. Keyshawn Johnson and John Gruden having a good time on the sideline. And now we're told there is a penalty marker down back where the Bucks would have been offside at the 40-yard line, I assume. Well, if they were offside, they were offside at the 30. Now, here we go. That's the flag went flying. Bernie says, wait a second. I got this. All right, maybe I don't have it. Mm, 
didn't. I don't worry about it. I, I have to. There is no penalty on the play. There is no penalty. It is a touchback. <laughs> well, there's a flag, but no penalty. First and ten. This hanky fell out of my pocket. My bad. <laughs> oh, help me. All right, we have a time with 13-12 to go in the game. King three field goals. Warren Sapp and company up 9-0 fourth quarter. The Bears start from their 20. Can they get anything going on offense? You know, I love it. We're talking to Rob Johnson. I says, you know, you don't. You ask him, you don't avoid Gruden when he come off the field if you do something wrong. He said, no, I know when I do something wrong. He says, why am I going to avoid him? Because he's eventually going to get in my face, so I might as well go get it right now. Well, the other thing is, he's the son of a coach. His dad coached him in high school. He said, everybody's yelled at me and called me so many things. My dad used to just jump all over me. He said, you know, why avoid him? You're right, Paul. He knows what he did. Henry Burris in his first NFL start, 6 out of 14, 61 yards. He'll need at least that much in the fourth quarter to bring his club back. Booker dropped it, and it's intercepted by Brian Kelly. Bounced right into his hands, a perfect throw by Burris, and Booker who was approaching 100 catches, just dropped it. I, did, I thought Lynch had a shot at knocking it down earlier. The streak since the Colts did it all the way back in 75 through 77. And this is a wicked defense. Number one in total yards, number one in points all allowed. Brian Kelly, they have three guys out of that secondary going to the Pro Bowl. Probably should have been a fourth. That was his seventh interception. Out of the eye this time. Pittman behind all stop. They'll blow the play dead. You know, when you talk about this defense, then they are number Ball one. Start. 72 offense. The five-yard penalty is still first down. Roman Oban. But when you talk about this defense, they are aware of everything on the field. They really are. I mean, they work so hard defensively. And Monty Kiffin, you've got to give him all the credit in the world as a defensive coordinator of this team. I mean, this is his defense now, and these guys work for him. Pittman gets the carry, pushes the pile up to about midfield. Let's go to Chris Berman. Guys, one of the most entertaining games of the day. Tommy Maddox and the Steelers come back at home against Baltimore. Here he hits Antoine Randall L. Steelers win 34-31. They're the three seed in the AFC playoffs. Quite a comeback by Tommy Maddox and the Steelers. Rob Johnson, a little swing, nice catch by Pittman. A nice move to keep the play going, takes it to the 42, about five yards shy of a first down. Tommy Maddox had himself a sensational year. Filling in for Cordell Stewart when the Steelers were struggling, 61% completion. 19 touchdowns, 15 interceptions, and has come back from that spinal bruising and really got himself back playing well. Struggled a little bit the first game back, but he has that offense rolled. I, we talk about the Jets being a team. We talk about the Giants. I think the Steelers, everybody sort of forgot them. They were picked early in the year to be yep. in the Super Bowl. Everybody forgot them. You talk about Tampa's defense. Pittsburgh's got a pretty good one, too, Paulo. I know. That Tommy Maddox is the guy, the reason why they're in the playoffs. And that burning desire to play never left him, even when he wasn't in football anymore. Somebody forgot to cover Kent Dilger. And Rob Johnson found him for 17. They came on a blitz, left Dilger totally uncovered out in the flat, and Rob Johnson stayed in the pocket and makes the throw. Watch this. They bring on the outside. There comes Mike Green, the strong safety. But Brian Urlacher just can't get out to the sideline to make the play. And if they get another tight end in here who can block very well, it would free up Dilger a little bit. He's an excellent receiver. And he's done a, a good job for them blocking from that tight end spot. They got him from the Colts. He's a high school quarterback. Has the ability to throw the ball. Allstott now the deep man in the eye. The big guy rambles off the right side inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. Mike Brown, the free safety with the tackle. 
Mike Allstott is, you know, we're talking all power. He's going to the Pro Bowl as a fullback. But look at this. He sets up and he follows Barnes number 30 into the hole. Barnes gets a nice block on Erlacher, and they just, I mean, they open up a hole. He picks up six or seven yards on this play, but that's that hole was there. When he gets his shoulders square. <laughs> and those are big shoulders. Yeah, they are. All start again. Straight ahead, they'll stop him shy of the first down this time by about a yard. Ernest Grant was in on the tackle. I had the good fortune to play with John Riggins, the Hall of Famer, and Mike Allstott reminds me a lot of John, and one of the ways he reminds me so much about him is he always finishes forward. When John was being tackled, he'd always wind up going forward, picking up a few extra yards. Mike Allstott is the same type of a back. Once he gets, even if he's in traffic in the middle, he's always going to have a body lean and bounce off someone. Bucks need a long yard for the first down. And Allstott has it. Fighting for more, taking one shot after another and driving down to the 11. You know why? Why? That he, he can do this so well as his legs don't stop. I mean, as, as a runner, it's one of the things that you have to remember as a runner when you're a young player is to keep your legs moving all the time. And when he hits the hole, just look at the lower part of his body. He hits, watch his legs. They're still moving, they're still moving, they're still moving. And he just plows people over, and he ends up picking up the first down. He ran over Brian Erlacher that time. He just got pushed back into the pile. Took Mike Caldwell to put a shot on him to slow him down. He may outweigh Erlacher. Pittman is in the game, and the running game has really picked up in the second half for the Bucks. Pittman, as they string it out this time, hit and stopped at the line of scrimmage. You know, we have so many people that work so hard on this broadcast, we want to acknowledge some of them. Jay Rothman, our producer, Chip Dean, our director, have done an exceptional job all year long. Our stage managers, Nancy Volker and Becky Solomon, have helped us so much. All of the camera crew, the technicians, videotape and sound, the graphics people, Mark Fredrickson, our statistician, Dave Dare, our spotter, and to my uh, two Hall of Fame partners up here, Joe Theismann and Paul McGuire, and to Susie down on the field. Thank you so much for another wonderful year. It's been such a pleasure for me. I know we feel the same way, Michael, uh, about all the crew and you as well. Exactly. Pittman this time down to about the nine. Tampa Bay may not be able, they may have some problems up front in the offensive line throwing the football, but as long as they're able to run the ball and control the tempo of a game, they will be a tough team to beat. The thing is, what happens if they fall behind? We saw them fall behind against Pittsburgh. We saw them fall behind against New Orleans, a game that we did on Sunday night. They weren't able to come back. That's right. They cannot afford a game where their defense lets up one bit and gives up big plays. Here, here. All start. Nice fake by Rob Johnson. He's trying to run. Throws it incomplete. One other person I need to mention by name, Alex Stern from Elias, because Alex Stern is the only person I know on the face of the earth that's been able to explain the playoff picture for the last three <laughs> weeks, and he's done it perfectly. And when he tells me, I actually understand. The other thing about Alex is when you ask him a question, he does know the answer. Yes, he does. Unlike who? <laughs> Got him <my> right. <laughs> Michael, you're, I'm you're on I'm standing on your left. I know. The guy to my right. Well, who's on my right? Who's over there? <laughs> Martin Gramatica has hit three straight, tries to make it four in a row from 26 yards and does. And the Bucks have increased their lead to 12 nothing. For the Bears, it is still only a two touchdown game. And it looks like it will be a happy new year for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They are up by a dozen over the Bears. Fourth quarter, Chicago has shown no signs of scoring. Ahmad Merritt upended at the 29. 6.55 to go. The Bears need two touchdowns. They need them in a hurry. Instead, they've got a fight going. Boys will be boys. 
Yeah, Meg Merritt, he comes walking out with the football. He says, I don't have anything to do with this. I just have the ball. We've got a timeout, 6.55 left. 7.30 on ESPN. Warren Sapp working the crowd. I think Warren forgot he's not at home. Burris out in the flat to White. And Des White takes it all the way to the 48. Let's go to Susie. Mike, you've talked about all the pro bowlers on this Bucks defense. Well, eight years ago when Brooks and Sapp were just rookies, then teammate Hardy Nickerson returned from the Pro Bowl with T-shirts for the young guys. Well, Sapp tossed his, but Brooks wore his for inspiration. Every day in the offseason while he was working out, and then tattered shirt under his jersey during the season. He looked at the roster, he said, there's a place for me there. Well, yes, six straight years he's been to the Pro Bowl. Now he buys his own shirt, wears it a couple of days every year. And he has earned the right to do just that, Susie. Kelly with another interception, his second of the night. Brian Kelly with eight for the year. Rondé Barber on the other side led the NFL in interceptions a year ago, so they don't throw his way anymore. They go at Kelly, and he has picked eight. What a defense this ball club has. An unbelievable finish to the NFL regular season as the playoff picture finally comes into focus. We'll sort it all. The Buccaneers have never won a game under 40 degrees at kickoff. They are on the verge of breaking that 0-21 streak. Allstott hit in the backfield. He'll lose a yard. Bobby Howard, who has been everywhere tonight on defense. That interception by uh, Brian Kelly, to me, he's a guy that took over in that secondary for Donnie Abraham. Everybody said, gee, Donnie Abraham had six interceptions last year. How's it going to be any better? We talk about the Pro Bowlers. Rondé Barber's been to the Pro Bowl. Uh, John Lynch has been to the Pro Bowl. Of course, we know Derek Brooks has gone there. Brian Kelly, with eight interceptions, also makes a real good case for the future. Yes, he does. To be one of those guys that may wind up playing in Hawaii someday. Another run blitz coming, and Pittman shakes one tackle and back near the original line of scrimmage. And all they want to do is just to keep the clock moving, run the ball, punt. If the Bucks get Brad Johnson back and getting this by will go a long way toward doing that, what are their chances in the playoffs? Paulie? Well, I think, I think they're pretty good because of their defense. You know, the Baltimore Ravens went and won the Super Bowl with the best defense in football. Well, this is the best defense in football. And Brad Johnson really, to me, gives them the only hope they have to really continue on in the playoffs and get to the Super Bowl. He's got to get healthy. Third and long for Rob Johnson and Tampa Bay. They don't risk anything. They give it to Pittman, and Pittman is up to about the 44. Do you know what Brad Johnson did for Christmas for this offense? Every offensive player and every offensive coach got a plasma screen, flat screen television worth $1,100 as a Christmas gift from Brad Johnson. Well, I want to thank you, by the way, for, for my mirror, the little mirror that you sent that I saw the sticker was still on for 427 that you picked up someplace. I want to thank you for that, too. There goes his gift. That was the crew, that was the crew gift. No, I think that's great, Michael. Just kidding. That is really a nice thing. That, you take care of the guys that take care of you. That 427 was for all of them, not just that one. I thought so. R.W. McCorders will go back to take the punt. He's got great speed. McCorders will cut down at the 33. Just drilled that time. Jermaine Phillips, an 18-yard return after a 42-yard punt. Called the illegal procedure motion on the Tampa Bay Bucks. 
Monday night, Capital One Bowl Week continues with two games on ESPN and two Eastern. The SEC West champion Arkansas Razorbacks will go against the Minnesota Golden Gophers. That's in the Gaylord Hotel's Music City Bowl. And at 5.30 Eastern, the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest try to slow down Jason Fife in the explosive Oregon offense in the second annual Seattle Bowl Monday on ESPN. It looks like they're going to make him kick again. Now, they got the wind at their back, and... Tampa does. Yeah, they do, and, and you know, this was pretty good field position for, for Chicago, unless they really think they can break it. I think they're either looking for a block or the big return. The net was only 23 yards on that punt, but, of course, you get a chance to put it back in the hands of RW. And you know that the offense has not moved the ball at all against this defense. You need to play on special teams. You need Joe, a couple of them now. Joe, the year your team won the Super Bowl, what did you buy of the offensive all the players? I got them all portraits. So of you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. That was good. Man, that was good. As a matter of fact, yes. <laughs> Bears put on pressure, can't get there. Beautiful kick by Tupa, and it goes all the way into the end zone. <laughs> no, I gave, I, I gave him portraits of themselves. <laughs> my, I tell you, my offensive line was so good, it, it, it got to a point where you had to try and get them a lot of different things. We got another fight going on down on the field. I mean, uh, Warren Sapp's out there, throw a flag, throw something. One other acknowledgement we would like to make earlier this fall, the Buffalo Hall of Fame inducted our buddy Paul McGuire uh, for all of the brilliant career he had in the American Football League as, as a punter. They are very proud of him in Buffalo. Very proud of you here. Well, thank you very much. It's very nice. Congratulations, Congratulations Paul. Thank you very much. It's That's great. It is kind of neat when you, your town that you live in recognizes it. Absolutely. Him. You know what you deserved. Well, I mean, you, know, you, know, you played in an era when I think the game was, I think it's special now, but you played in an era that laid the foundation for where these kids are today and these young athletes we get a chance to see. Yeah, you know, it was kind of neat, the old American football league, and, and there were only, I think, uh, 16 of us, that or 17, that played the entire 10 years of the American football league. And that was kind of neat, you know, but and those are the days when you you were talking, you'd have loved it. They had wide open football, and they only played man-to-man. -man. Well, we, well, when I first got in the league in 74, that was the same thing. We only, there were only 10 defenses and five of them were man to man. <laughs> Burris under pressure tries to go underneath to Johnson. Underneath the umpire. <laughs> Derek Brooks has had himself a terrific night. Everywhere he needed to be to make a play, he showed up for this defense. There he is out in the flat. He runs down Burris, trying on a bootleg. Now he's hanging out, making a tackle, just leveling Des White. And here's the pick. Chicago looked like they might have something going right at the end of the half. And Derek Brooks winds up with another big interception. Only 3.44 to go in the game. Burris fakes the screen. They cover it beautifully. Tipped and intercepted again. Brian Kelly gets another interception. That's three for the night, nine for the year for Brian Kelly. Or is it Dwight Smith? It's Dwight Smith. Look like 25. That's his fourth. And three of the last five Henry Burris passes have been picked by this opportunistic defense. He makes a terrible mistake here. The screen is set up to the left. He pumps once, pumps twice. The lineman should have been flagged for being downfield anyway, and he still tries to force a play. That's inexperience and not really understanding what to do with the football. And a microcosm of the Bears season, having to play inexperienced players for starters who have gone down with injuries one after the other after the other. One thing you can be sure of, the Bears under Dick Duran will be back next year. All Scott leans forward for a couple. The Bucks have feasted on turnovers for the last three years. This defense has been so brilliant. The offense making fewer and fewer mistakes, and you have to go back 
since 1950, only Green Bay and the L.A. Rams under George Allen have had three consecutive years with a 15 or better turnover margin. And one of the great stats in all of sports, Joe, the turnover margin the Redskins had, what year and how many? 1983, when we went 16-2, uh, and two, actually 16-3 and three when we lost to Subo, we were plus 43. <laughs> we were plus 43 with that, that football team. I think it was one of the greatest football teams that ever played. And defensively, it was incredible. Our, you figure we averaged a differential of almost four per game between Remarkable. the other team. It really is. But the, the fact that this football team has gotten 15, I think that in the years to come with John Gruden as the coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and as this offense starts to develop, we'll see the type of offense like you see in Oakland now where he established the foundation four years ago. What a combination that would be, an offense that can move the ball with this kind of defense. Pittman trying to get outside, stays inbounds and is wrapped up. And the Bears using their timeouts to try to conserve as much as possible. I had a question for you. Going into the playoffs now, all the teams are set. Best team in the AFC. Mike, every team I have picked, Joe, is out of the playoffs. Well, what I still now? thought Miami and Denver were the two most talented teams. All right, now who's in though? Who do you think? Who do you think oh. is there now? I think the, of, the, of the, all the teams, I think it's it's either I think it's either the Oakland Raiders if they get their defensive guys back, which which they played very well with, 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 with substitutes, and and uh, the Jets are as about as hot as you're going to get. And if they can continue to be hot. You know they have they have the best chance. I'd be afraid of the Steelers. I, I think I think the AFC. You look at them, and you've got certain teams that can do it. I think in the NFC, certainly now that Green Bay has to go on the road, we saw how they played with a lot at stake in New York. When they get away from Green Bay, they get away from the element of the cold weather, which Brett Favre and the entire football team is phenomenal in. And you don't know what's happened to Donald Driver. You're not sure how healthy he's going to be now. Isn't the key in the NFC to a lot of people whether Donovan McNabb can come back and play for the Eagles? I think it's a question because he's been gone so long, and I'm not sure whether it'll be an asset or a liability. All start taken down by Philip Daniels. Let me go back to the AFC for a second. <laughs> Something just hit me. The Raiders lose four in a row. Miami lost four in a row. Nobody seemed to have wanted it. So I don't know about any of them now. I, I, I mean, I, because I anything can happen in, in, in that in that division. I really, really think that, you know, and everybody, everybody, everybody has a shot as far as the AFC is concerned. I think the Oakland Raiders are the best team in the AFC, and I think they're led by the MVP and Rich Gannon. He has had such a brilliant year. The Raiders will get a first round bye, as will Tennessee. Better watch out for them. They have just been on fire. Cleveland and Pittsburgh will play in the wild card game as well as Indianapolis and the New York Jets. And then Indianapolis for a while was really going to give it a run. I think I, I've mentioned Jim Fossil for coach of the year, but I think those two, Oakland and Tennessee, I think you have the MVP of the league in Rich Gannon, and certainly you have to make a case for the job that Jeff Fisher has done with that ball club. There's Tennessee was buried, gone, dead, completely out of the picture, and has stormed back by nine straight, I believe. How about the job Herman Edwards did? Yep. One and four and a two and five starts for the Jets. People said they were going to quit. You remember that? He said, no, sir, and they have come back in a big way. Gramatica trying to make it five field goals in this game. Pulled that one a little bit, but got it within the uprights, and that'll make it 15 to nothing for the Bucks. Now with the Bucks winning this game, here is the NFC picture. Philadelphia gets home field advantage throughout the playoffs. The Bucks move up to number two, which would mean they would get a bye. And in the wild card weekend, the Falcons would face Green Bay. The Giants would face San Francisco. And no matter what San Francisco does tomorrow night, their status as a wild card team cannot improve. If Tampa Bay ultimately would have to go to Philadelphia and play, Philadelphia has ended Tampa Bay's Super Bowl hopes the last two years in a row. And in either one of those games, Tampa Bay failed to score a touchdown. Which I'm... we've seen here again tonight. Yep. But with Brad Johnson back, if he is healthy enough to play, I think that will make a huge difference. Only two more weeks will get him ready. I do too. Certainly he hopes so. And there's a happy Keyshawn Johnson. This will be a franchise record for this club. 12 victories this year. 
And you know, I'll tell you, a guy I really feel sorry for tonight, and it's going to be that way for the entire offseason, is Mr. Henry Burris, who took over quarterback, the very first start in the National Football League, and they haven't put a point on the board, and he's going to have to live with this game that he's played, I'm just saying, the entire offseason. He's up against the best defense in football. Then. I understand that, but I, you know, what I'm saying, it's just hard to, to go through an entire offseason with that over your head. But you bring up a great point. To take it a little bit further, what about the Chicago Bears quarterback situation? Chris Chandler with the concussions. You don't know if he's coming back. Jim Miller, I mean, Jim Miller has hardly been able to stay healthy. Before last year, in the, se in the seven years Jim Miller's, or nine years Jim Miller's been in the league, he's never started more than three or played more than five in a season. I think the Bears have to wonder what's going to happen with their quarterback situation. There is Chandler, who has had multiple concussions. Personal and foul a against personal Tampa. Personal foul will go. No, oh. no, check it. Now they're pointing the other way. It's going to go against Chicago, and both teams have gotten a little feisty here in the fourth quarter. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 49. Will mark off half the distance to the goal. First down. Mark Serqua is called for the personal foul. And the Bears have not had a quarterback to the Pro Bowl only one year. That was Jim McMahon in their Super Bowl year of 85. But Jim Miller is one of those guys, and you made the point, Joe, if he can stay healthy, he's one of those people like Brad Johnson who is not a spectacular quarterback, but he really knows how to run the offense and make decisions. He's a little bit more like Rob Johnson because he can't stay healthy enough to lead his football team. And when he does, you saw the results they had a year ago. And now Corey Sauter, in his third year in the NFL, will finish up for the Chicago Bears, and there is a big cheer that goes up from the Bears fans at this point with 2.51 to go. Sauter, they got him on waivers from the Colts as he was released this year. Played his college ball at Minnesota. 6'4", 212, got a pretty good arm. Has some mobility. And that pass complete to Merritt. He knows how to throw those four-yard patterns. Uh, he could play for Tampa. <laughs> the Bucks have been running. That's about all the time he's had to throw the football. I think you get you get Ted Washington back, Keith Trailer back. R.W. McCorders missed seven games, their starting corner. Jerry get, Azuma's a converted running back who's finally settled in at the other corner for the Bears. They get their entire offense back. An <laughs> offensive lineman. 2.32 to go in the ball game. Sauter under pressure. Gets it out to the 27-yard line. Ellis Wims who had a sack in this game. That was not a sack. Down. No, they gained a yard on the play. No, he had one earlier. Yeah. Sauter throws the catch made again by Merritt. And we have reached the two-minute warning here at the University of Illinois. Final game of the regular season for the Bucks and the Bears. And it's 15-0 Tampa Bay on the way to a bye in the playoffs. The Bucks in total command of this one. They are throwing a shutout at the Chicago Bears. 15-0 with two minutes to go. And John Gruden better hope they don't pour any cold things on him. Draw play to Leon Johnson. Oh, I think John's going to get a bucket full of something. <laughs> if I was him, I'd be looking over my shoulder right about now. Sauter trying to keep the drive going. Flag down. That should be interference on Rondé Barber. That's interference. 20 defense. That's a first down. Clock stops with 1.41 to go on the penalty. Of course, Rondé was bumming a little bit. Uh, Tiki Barber yesterday putting, you know, the ball on the ground a few times. His brother was all upset for him, but it turned out turned out to be an okay day in New York. Boy, it didn't. It's one of those you just forget about and move on. He had a brilliant running game. The fumbles, as it turned out, didn't hurt them. Sauter 
deep sideline incomplete intended for Marcus Robinson yeah, who has been barely mentioned tonight Robinson coming back from a career threatening knee injury had the single season club record in 99 with 1400 plus yards on 89 catches has fought injuries ever since. I just say about Tiki Barber yesterday he had four fumbles three of them he lost one he got back at the end of the game but the most important thing is they won the football game. Sauter has some pretty good mobility now makes a mistake there he should have gotten out of bounds instead he gets to the 49 clock will continue to run. I think Tampa Bay as they go into the playoffs this year and Paul you made a mention of it in the open. I think they'll be a better football team because they struggled so much in the beginning of the year and then they make that big run at the end just to get in and I think they lose steam. This is going to be a much fresher football team when they have an opportunity to play in two weeks. Like I said they'll they'll be in Tampa too. Yes they will. Here's the playoff picture on Wild Card Weekend on Saturday, Indianapolis at the Jets. That's a 4.30 start. Atlanta at Green Bay at 8 o'clock. Then Cleveland and Pittsburgh on Sunday at 1 o'clock. The Giants and San Francisco, a 4.30 start. First round of the playoffs. What will the Packers do with Michael Vick? That's, that's going to be very interesting to watch. One of the great athletes. In the history of this game, Leon Johnson fighting for extra yards down to the 20. 31-yard gain. Bears are going to down the ball. And I think the Bucks want a shutout, too. I don't think they want to give up a cheap score here. No, they do not. Sauter kills the clock with 42 seconds remaining. Leon. Well, if you're an optimist, look at it this way. It's 15 to nothing. A touchdown, a two-point conversion, an onside kick, a touchdown, a two-point conversion. The Bears win 16-15, and everything we told you disappears. They can do that second thing that we talked about next year, the uh, second touchdown, because I don't think they'll have <laughs> enough time. 12 men on the field, on the defense. At the five-yard penalty, first down. Stranger things have happened, but not many. It's going to be tough without any timeouts. Unless they can score right here. They'll wind up with about 36 seconds. Well, you've got to get the first touchdown before any of the rest of it is even a possibility. But you know what's amazing? We talked about this right at the beginning of this game. With all, of, all the players that have been hurt on the Chicago Bear team, you think about these guys. They have not quit. No. They have no timeouts. They're down by 15 points. And they put it, the, the, the quarterback that hasn't even thrown a ball, hasn't even taken a snap with the first unit in the football game, and he's moved them down the field. I understand during like a, a prevent defense. That's a credit to Dick Jerron. I think it coach. is. How about Corey Sauter? He has never played, been a career backup for three years in the NFL. He comes in here trying to make something happen in the closing seconds. Completes this pass to Merritt, and he's taken down. Mike, I think your I think your scenario is starting to tick away at this point. Well, they've got to throw the ball in the end zone. That's for sure. Not time for Derek Brooks to pick off another one. Sauter for the end zone, incomplete intended for Merritt. 15 seconds to go. I'll tell you where it takes a lot of courage for a quarterback is at this, <laughs> this point in the game yeah. because you, you have to stand in there and you know you're going to get slaughtered. You are just like meat on a rack. <laughs> They're waiting to, to, <laughs> and to lay you out and, and you've you got to stay. You're waiting for your receivers to get somewhere where they might get open and you just have to stand and wait. You're right, Paul. If you watch this. I mean, th these guys on the defense are just teeing off. Simeon Rice, I guarantee, is trying to get one more. Especially here at the old stadium he played in. Sauter hangs in the pocket, throws underneath Merritt. He's to the seven yard line, but the clock is running. That's it. The Bears trying to line up to down it. They can't do it. 
And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, for the first time in their history, have won a game under 40 degrees. They set a franchise record 12 victories, and they will get a bye in the first round of the playoffs, giving their starting quarterback an extra week to heal. The Bucks defense has done the job as they beat the Bears 15-0 here in Champaign-Urbana. Congratulations to Tampa Bay. They didn't have all their weapons tonight, but they used what they had very, very well. They win at 15-0. The Bears finish 4-12. Let's go to Susie with John Gruden. Congratulations on a first-round bye. Considering the state of your starting quarterback, how relieved are you? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, we're uh, very excited, very proud of our team. Uh, we're not into style points. We're 12-4. We won three games in every quarter. And, hey, Rob Johnson played well enough for us to win. First time in franchise history that you do have 12 wins. Just how proud of this whole group? Really proud of the coaches and the players. Our fans have helped us out. It's first time we won a cold weather, too. So we're going to go home and celebrate. We're going to go back to Tampa. We like it there better anyhow. How nice is it to have the number one defense? Well, it's nice. You know, we're going to need the number one defense. Hopefully we get the number one passer in the NFC ready for the playoffs. I think getting a bye week will help us get a lot of guys rejuvenated. But uh, we're confident in ourselves. we got a lot to prove now. Does this mean you can get a little sleep at least tonight. I'm going to get some sleep tonight, you bet. Thanks, Susie. <laughs> Happy <See>. New Year, <laughs> Mike. All right, Susie, thank you very much. The final score, Bucks win it over the Bears 15-0. For Joe Theismann, Paul McGuire, Susie Colbert, and our entire hardworking ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick saying good night from Memorial Stadium in Champaign. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. ESPN, thank you for watching this presentation.